Hi, my name is Bruno Silva. I'm one of the dentists at Brighton Implant Clinic. And today we're going to talk about a different type of implant called zygomatic implants. Now, um, maybe if I can give a little brief background about how conventional implants work, and then we can move on to how zygomatic implants are different. So if you have a missing tooth, or in this case we're going to talk mainly about like more complex cases, if you have uh, multiple teeth missing, mainly in the upper jaw, you may find yourself that it's a situation where your dentist has um, had a diagnosis or actually made a uh, thorough assessment and come to the conclusion that you have very little bone. Now, whereas conventional implants, they can be placed into the jaw bone. Uh, prior to do that, you have to check and make sure that you have enough bone available. Your dentist will usually take a CT scan to do that. If they don't have a CT scan on one side, they can refer you. And your dentist will then check with uh, some accurate measurements as to how much bone is available. Now, not all patients are the same, but all of us are the same. Some of us have more bone in the upper jaw, some have, uh, some of us have like harder, denser bone. So each case is unique. It's not, um, there's generally similarities between the upper and the lower jaw, but each specific case can be different. <coughs> so unfortunately, with some cases, we find that actually the jaw bone is very, very limited. This can be either due to trauma, it can be either also because someone's had a bridge, like a long span bridge on the upper jaw for many years. Um, underneath the bridge, you actually get like resorption of the bone, the bone becomes thinner. Um, or just if, uh, a different scenario or example is if uh, someone's been suffering from very aggressive types of gum disease, um, it can actually result in you having very little bone left. So if you're faced with a scenario where in your upper jaw, you've got actually very little bone left remaining, your dentist may be giving you a few options in terms of implants. Um, a full denture, before we get to implants, a full denture will be a option that's involving no implants at all. But if for any reason in the back areas of the mouth, you want to have implants and you have very little bone there, then zygomatic implants might be, a, might be an option. So, um, prior to zygomatic implants, or prior to zygomatic implants becoming more popular and more widely used um, in dental practice, um, if I can just maybe go back, actually zygomatic implants are not uh, as commonly used as uh, general implants, as just conventional implants I should say. They are very specific and very um, unique, they are not, not used anywhere as frequently. You know? <coughs> so, zygomatic implants are quite unique. Um, we use them in only uh, very advanced, um, complex cases, um, but they work really, really well. And I'm going to explain um, why the rationale, why we use zygomatic implants in the practice. So, there are um, alternatives to having zygomatic implants, and those generally are uh, bone grafting techniques. Now there are many different options of bone grafting and your dentist may be suggesting an option for you. Um, the disadvantage with bone grafting is sometimes is that the length of time that the bone grafting procedure takes to actually heal. Uh, sometimes it can be nine months, even up to a year. It's quite a long protracted process. It can be quite difficult also when having um, bone grafts if you're using an abidenture. For a bone graft to be successful, the bone uh, material that's being um, grafted, it needs to be left very still. You can't put pressure on it. There has to be no movement on it, and that can be quite difficult if you're having an abidenture and you're biting and having to eat and function. So, uh, although bone grafting is um, very good, it does have some limitations in that um, it can be unpredictable. It's quite uncomfortable. Um, it's a long period of time for the healing process and um, they can be quite costly, okay? So, as an alternative, and this again, I'm talking very broadly, this doesn't apply to every single case. I can't stress enough the importance that you need to have um, a thorough assessment with your dentist if you are in this um, category of a problem, okay? So, 
as an alternative to um, bone grafting, you could be suitable for zygomatic implants. Now, zygomatic implants, they actually, like, by technical terms, they're considered as they like outside the normal jawbone. So instead of placing it into the upper jaw where conventional implants are placed, they're actually placed into these high areas over here, actually your cheekbone, and hence the name, the zygomatic implant, it's actually called the zygomatic bone. So it's a much longer implant, and the implant basically fixates into an area where generally we find the jawbone to be quite good. It's a good density, and it's a, generally an area with good quality bone. So just uh, very briefly, the upper jaw generally has a softer bone than the lower jaw. So for example, this area where the implants are placed, they generally have like a softer type of bone. It's a more porous, more permeable, softer bone than for example, the lower jaw. But if we're actually bypassing this area of the upper jaw and using the cheekbones, the cheekbones are actually uh, generally um, uh, more similar to the lower jaw than what we find in the upper jaw. So the bone is like a little bit harder, it's denser, and it's um, an alternative to uh, bone graft. So if I can like, recap, basically if you have an upper jaw where you have very limited amounts of bone, and bone grafting is being suggested, or your dentist has said that there's no other um, alternative to dental implants, it may be worth considering checking to see if it's suitable for cybermatic implants. Um, with cybermatic implants, the surgery can be done while you're asleep um, with intravenous sedation, which is quite effective. And the surgery takes about three to four hours to carry out here in our practice, okay? Um, the advantage of uh, bone grafting uh, techniques is that the surgery is um, generally, instead of having to wait for nine months or a year for the grafts to heal, you're actually able to, in many cases, or most cases, able to have teeth loaded onto the implants and zygomatic implants on the same day. So the, the implants are longer and they're quite strong implants. And because I mentioned the jawbone in the upper jaw, in the, in the zygomatic bone, is generally quite dense, it is actually a very neat solution for this problem. So there are different combinations of how zygomatic implants can be used, but generally we would need an area at the front of the mouth where <coughs> we have good amounts of your own bone. So we could have, for example, two conventional implants in the upper jaw at the front areas, and you would maybe consider you know, one or two zygomatic implants at the back. That's a very common or very um, usual, that's a very, that's just only one of those scenarios. You can actually have, if you've got very little bone, completely even in the upper uh, front areas and the back areas, you can even have two zygomatic implants on either side. Now, um, the purpose of this video is really just to give a, a comparison, a very brief introduction into what are zygomatic implants, how they're different from conventional implants. I can't stress enough how important it is to get you know, good, unbiased information from, from more than one practice, from more than one dentist, just to understand that, you know, the full extent and, and, and what's involved in this treatment. Um, all dental implant treatment, it is predictable, it does work well. Obviously, it's important that you understand what's involved and, you know, how this treatment can benefit you. You know, you have to be comfortable with the dentist, with the practice that you're being treated to make sure that, you know, long term, not only during the treatment that you're going to be uh, you know, well looked after and that you're going to be able to feel comfortable enough that you know, if anything goes wrong, that you can go back and you can actually you know, obviously get problems rectified be able to speak to your dentist. So, um, with dental implants, with cytomatic implants, they have been in use for about uh, 20 years. Um, it is a treatment that's becoming more, more, more widely used. Um, and in our practice we've been placing zygomatic implants now for about five years. And the need really for zygomatic implants became um, and only arose really because we found that in some cases they weren't responding well to bone grafting. 
and we didn't have an alternative for patients that wanted to have fixed teeth or uh, an implant overdenture. So cybermatic implants has come to kind of help and resolve some of those cases that are quite complex. We see a big variety of cases in our clinic. Um, generally patients will come and see us because they want a second opinion or they want to just um, you know, speak to us because we're dealing mainly with dental implants um, and, and only implants. We can try to give a, you know, an experienced and also honest opinion as to what can be done, what's involved, how long treatment will take, um, what are the risks involved. So I will put some links about cybernetic implants in, uh, in, the, in the link below. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to add any comments or if you want to send me any questions, by all means, please um, send me an email. My email is, um, will be uh, listed below. And yeah, if you have any questions, by all means, just get in touch with us. So my name is Bruno Silva. It's uh, Brighton Implant Clinic, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks.